Good afternoon. Welcome to the Anchoring Trust in East Asia's New Regionalism Plenary Session. My name is Murat Sanmez. I'm a member of the Managing Board of the World Economic Forum, responsible for our engagement with the business community. Joining me on stage this afternoon are the co-chairs of the World Economic Forum on East Asia 2015. Hans Paul Berkner, Chairman of the Boston Consulting Group, John Riadi, Executive Director of Lippe Group Indonesia, Badi Gunadi Sadikin, Chief Executive Officer of Bank Mandiri Indonesia, William Lacey Swing, Director General, International Organization for Migration, Geneva, and Teresita C. Coson, Vice Chairperson, SM Investment uh, Corporation, Philippines. So welcome again. Prior to joining the World Economic Forum, I spent 25 years in Silicon Valley, where optimism is the fuel of innovation. I can tell you that I'm very encouraged by the same sense of optimism that I saw in the last 48 hours of open, forward-looking, and solution-oriented discussions between policymakers, businesses, civil society, and international organizations. I now would like to turn to our co-chairs to reflect on the meeting and share their perspective with a key takeaway. John, why don't we start with you, but before we get going with your comments, on behalf of all of us here, I'd like to congratulate you on your marriage. A big <laughs> congratulations <laughs> from all of us. If you can share your thoughts uh, in a few minutes with us, John, please. Uh, well, thank you very much for the congratulations, Murad. I wanted, to, wanted you to know that I arrived from my honeymoon um, at 3.40 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. We so just in time for a haircut and then directly to the forum. I also cut my honeymoon short <laughs> because the forum moved their dates up. I know we but, owe your wife big time. So. But nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless it's an honor to, to be here with you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to commend uh, the World Economic Forum uh, for allowing Indonesia the opportunity uh, to serve as host uh, of the East Asia meeting uh, this year. I think the, the forum's decision to allow Indonesia to host the forum speaks a lot about Indonesia's relevance. Uh, we heard uh, President Jokowi speak yesterday of the optimism that he has of the country and of the region, and I think uh, this uh, confirms the belief that on all the major global challenges that our world is facing today, whether it's economically, politically, technologically, environmentally, on food security, Indonesia has a lot to contribute. It's got a lot of relevance. It's got a lot to share. But I think the decision of the forum to host this meeting in Indonesia goes beyond Indonesia's importance. I think it speaks to the importance of the region. This is the East Asia meeting of the World Economic Forum, but over the last, I think, six to seven years, every year, it's been hosted by an ASEAN country. So I think the decision of the forum to host it in Indonesia speaks as much about its confidence in Indonesia as much as it does about the confidence of the region. Um, so I think that's just wonderful. Uh, I would also like to commend the forum on its decision, uh, on its uh, choice this year to focus on the issue of trust. When my grandfather, uh, he's 86 now, when he first dreamt about getting into banking and becoming a banker, and he told his father that he wanted to get into banking, uh, his father sort of chastised him and said, you know, you, you have no money, how, how are you going to be a banker? Uh, his response was, at that time was that he believed that banking is not about the lending and borrowing of money, but rather the trading of trust. Banking was about trust and it's not about money. And I think the forum, the meeting th this, this week has allowed us an opportunity to reflect on that. And I think that's really what business is about. Until today, whether it's through the hospitals that we operate, through the schools that we manage, through the retail operations that we're able to be a part of, it's still trust that we're sort of selling and having that connection with, with, with the people. And I think what's, what's important here is that I think over the last decades or years, the people have sort of lost trust in the ability of markets and business to create wealth and to fairly allocate opportunities. So I think it is important for business to reflect on its role and the role that it can play in society. 
But I think this is important not only for business. I think no matter who we are, whether it's in government, whether it's in education, whether it's in media or NGO, this provides us with an important time to reflect on the idea of stewardship, how we can be better stewards of what we've been given, and how we can all rethink what we're doing and better structure our institutions to reflect the realities of our world today. So for, for those reasons, I wanted to thank the World Economic Forum for giving us the opportunity to reflect on these issues. There are many challenges, but I think we live in a world that's extremely exciting. And if we can get things right, I think the opportunities are endless. Thank you, Murat. Thank you, John. Tessie, switching over to you, uh, what are your thoughts uh, from the um, Philippines and also from a regional uh, perspective? In these two days, I can see the increase of uh, awareness and also uh, and also the upbeat on the, uh, on the ASEAN in, uh, economic community. Although there are a lot of things that we still have to do beside the tariff, I think that there is an understanding of, uh, of the freer movement of uh, human capital, specifically the skilled worker and professionals. And a lot of, the, a lot of people share uh, my sentiment on this area, and I'm quite happy about it. So I'm, I'm glad that the Indonesia and also the WEF have provided us uh, a venue to express uh, what we think about the freer movement of the human uh, capitals. Um, and I'd like to mention also that uh, uh, in the past few years, uh, before Philippines is, uh, is in the investment map, uh, when they speak about uh, Southeast Asia, it's usually Singapore, Indonesia, and, and uh, Malaysia, and I'd like to tell you that the Philippines wants to also be actively participating in this area. And um, it's not only the other countries where Thailand and Myanmar and uh, Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos. Philippines is very much interested to participate uh, in the ASEAN integration. Well, we look forward to that. Hans Paul, you're the fact checker of uh, this uh, group. Um, and you had highlighted a couple of points in the opening uh, press uh, conference as well. So what are the key takeaways that you would like us to part with from here? Yeah, I must say I was uh, indeed very impressed and also encouraged that, uh, of course, uh, President uh, Jokowi, uh, but also uh, ministers from Indonesia, from the Philippines, from uh, Malaysia, um, from uh, Thailand, um, um, from Cambodia, from Vietnam. I think they all expressed um, the desire to make this work, to open up uh, movement of talent, of course, but also uh, be willing to uh, open up their markets um, for competition, to create a level playing field. And um, while, of course, there are lots of um, uh, still obstacles on the way, and I'm sure um, not everything will be as easy as you know being put in words, uh, but I think it is indeed encouraging to see that there is a, a great willingness to engage, to make this work, and to, uh, to fill the worlds uh, with, with action. And so I think one of the key elements, of course, uh, for uh, the uh, ASEAN economic community is to move forward, um, to really create um, a level playing field, a much bigger market, and I think then to really to fulfill its promise to its people, the more than 600 million people, to really uh, grow the pie significantly over the coming years, and I think if that's working out, we will see massive investments, uh, uh, additional investments into the region from all over the world. Thank you, Hans Paul. Ambassador Swing, the movement of people, your area of focus as IOM. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm really uh, grateful for this forum. I'm very excited about what I've uh, heard and seen and what, I, what I've listened to. I'll go back with a uh, a much better sense of what's uh, happening in this very dynamic area here. I'm grateful particularly for, to our Indonesian uh, uh, hosts here who've been wonderful. I, sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. Sorry. John will sorry. answer it. I apologize. <laughs> I should have left it. Uh, I should have left it. Cooperation. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I wanted, I wanted just to make three points. First of all, I think that it's quite clear that with the, the very exciting regional integration that uh, is taking place here, that um, human mobility or migration in its classical term uh, will be greatly uh, increased and uh, expedited as a result of that. Now, 
having said that, the second thing is we need to look on it both as a challenge and an opportunity. And I think with the right policies, we can make it, make it work well. We need to do a number of very simple things. One is we need to begin a program of public education and information and awareness raising. That mobility is, great, is really a, a great asset to us here. We have a lot of talent in the area. And we need to get beyond the stereotypes and fears that we've had about people coming in to our countries or our people going to other countries and the fact of the differences and so on to realize that these are these are great assets for us. Now, if we do that well, this can be, we, we need to do something about the, the, the recruitment agencies to make sure that they are legal and not corrupt, that their people are being recruited under the right circumstances. Uh, we need to do something about lowering the cost of remittance transfers. Above all else, we need to ensure greater physical security. Too many people are dying along the migratory route. We're very much seized with the fact that 1,600 people have died in the Mediterranean since the 1st of January, so we need to deal with that. Final point is very simply to say what I've repeated before, large-scale migration is inevitable given the demography and the disasters and the job demand. Secondly, it's highly necessary if we're going to do the jobs that need to be done, have the skills available, and be able to have flourishing economies. And finally, it's highly desirable if we have the right policies. So let me once again formulate my thesis, which is, that uh, essentially uh, migration is not a problem to be solved, it is a reality to be managed. Thank you. Thank you, and we've seen that sadly in Europe in the last couple of days as well, and that imp uh, highlights the importance of policy and physical security. Pabudi, I'd like to come to you as our uh, co-host. Uh, what are your thoughts, and if you can summarize the sentiment and the opportunities ahead, please. First, I would like to share my experience last night because my boss, the coordinating minister of the economy, after the meeting with the vice president, came to see me and say, by the way, that young Philip Rosler is from WEF, right, Woody? Yes. He wear a very nice blue shirt batik. <laughs> so for you that you don't know, Philip Rosler is the managing director of WEF, and he is wearing a batik yesterday. And my boss mentioned that he's wearing a beautiful batik, so I feel guilty. So today I'm wearing a batik, you know. <laughs> you, you look as good, if not better, than Philip. I'm, uh, I'm not as slim as Philip and as not as tall as Philip, but <laughs> at, at, at least, Philip, I represent, I try to represent Indonesia, it's not only you. And thank you, I'm also wearing blue because I just want to recognize that the color of WEF is also blue. We so, appreciate so, that, thank <laughs> you. We appreciate that. Uh, World Economic Forum that I like is because it is, uh, it is informal versus formal. It is not about presenting and listening, but it is about two ways communications. And it is not only about signing a formal agreement, but it is developing trust mutually among the attendants of World Economic Forum. I just went to four events, including two in Davos, one in the Philippines, and one in Indonesia. I feel at home already. And I think I strongly believe that we can, we can get things done and deliver impact faster if we do have a mutual trust that we develop through these meetings. Because you can easily meet with, this, with the executive, uh, with, with the bosses leaders, not only government, but also business leaders, social uh, entrepreneur leaders, and also art and cultural leaders in World Economic Forum. So I strongly believe, and thanks to World Economic Forum, that you have done and choose Indonesia to do this event. Uh, I really thank you and also for all the audience to come to Indonesia. The second one is about Indonesia itself. In next, until 2000. 30, 50 million Indonesian will enter middle class. That will give you ample opportunity to do business here. You can do business in health, socially, or you want to do business in food and beverage. You do any kind of business in Indonesia. 50 million is above the population of South Korea. It's slightly below the population of Thailand. So there are a lot ample of opportunity. We have some difficulties. Indonesia always have difficulties, especially financially. But as I, I, I mentioned during, during my first panel, the good things about Indonesia, when things are bad, we make good policies. Of course, when things are good, 
usually we make bad policies. But uh, <laughs> that's why we, we always need something, you know, down, a downturn for Indonesian uh, leaders to make good policy. But I'm optimist. Uh, if you're talking about optimism, you're talking about the future. And I want to give you a real example of Indonesia in the future. I'm 50 years old. John is 30 years old. I'm shorter, he's taller. <laughs> you know, I'm, I work as a banker, he's an entrepreneur. Of course I have enough money, but he's definitely richer. <laughs> right? But, oh, the, yeah. <laughs> but the most important thing, I'm Indonesia at present, and he is Indonesia at for, he is Indonesia for the future. So be optimistic about Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but as the World Economic Forum, the International Institution for Public-Private Cooperation, we share the same uh, sense of optimism with the realization of the challenges ahead and our responsibility as a global community to take action. I, st I stopped a few of the participants and I said, what do you think? And the common response was, it all sounds great, but is it going to be mostly talk or will we take action? And I think it's time to take action as well. And on that note, I wanted to highlight four initiatives that uh, we focused on as the World Economic Forum here uh, in Indonesia. The first one is Grow Asia. Today, we officially launched the Grow Asia initiative in partnership with the ASEAN Secretariat. We had over 170 leaders from ASEAN governments, global and local private sector, farmer associations, civil society, donors, and international organizations who came together to commit to developing agriculture in ASEAN. They committed to reaching 10 million smallholder farmers and helping them improve their productivity, profitability, and environmental sustainability by 20% by 2020. And we will report progress on each of the uh, East Asia meetings in the coming years. The second one is the strategic infrastructure as outlined by President uh, Jokowi in his speech. We had over 40 leaders from international and domestic business community who met with senior government leaders of Indonesia on improving public-private cooperation and accelerating the implementation of Indonesia's infrastructure plans. The World Economic Forum and Asian Development Bank have committed to work together with the government of Indonesia on deepening this cooperation. Financial inclusion, as we talked about, is key. 490 million adults in East Asia and the Pacific are unbanked, accounting for nearly 25% of the global total. Public-private collaboration is the only way to reduce that number. The Forum's Financial Inclusion Initiative launched its first partnership here in Indonesia a year ago, with plans to expand to another East Asia country in the coming year. And we did it in collaboration with International Finance Corporation, OJK, and Bank Mandiri. And finally, healthy population is key to sustainable growth. We are, as the World Economic Forum, focusing on non-communicable diseases, NCDs in short, and its impact on the economy of Indonesia to address, address, the, address the challenge. NCDs are diseases such as cardiovascular, cancers, chronic respiratory diseases, and diabetes. NCDs kill 38 million people each year. Unlike the conventional wisdom, almost three quarters of NCD deaths, 28 million, occur in low and middle income countries, a devastating blow to economic ambitions of these countries. Going forward, our discussions here will help shape our health program on a global level at the forum, and we will bring together experts from all stakeholders and identify the challenges, possible solutions, and bring it back to the regions that we're actively engaged in to move towards a healthier Indonesia and Asia. To achieve these goals, building and maintaining trust between and among the businesses, governments, and citizens across East Asia and around the globe is essential. Trust, as Philip said in his opening remarks, is the glue that will be holding the societies together. And we're very encouraged by the open discussions that took place uh, in this forum. As we're closing the World Economic Forum on East Asia in 2015, 
I'd like to extend our thanks to our hosts, Government of Indonesia, to our co-chairs, to more than 700 participants and leaders from 40 countries for your active engagement in these key issues in 60 sessions. We had 100 CEOs and chairpersons from the forum partners and members. We had heads of states and ministers, 150 journalists from national, regional, international news media, and more than 3 million people who followed us through the online platform, through the social platforms, and also the live streams. And finally, I'd like to extend our thanks to our colleagues at the World Economic Forum and our partners for having put this event together. I now would like to invite my colleague, Philip Rosler, along with Minister Mustafa, Minister of International Trade and Industry uh, of Malaysia, to make the final remarks and announce the location for our next East Asia Summit. Yes, so thank you, Murat. Only three issues. First, announcement. Second, a tiny ceremony. And third, official closing. So the announcement. It's not accidentally that we have here Minister Mohammed Mustafa, the Minister for International Relations and Industry in Malaysia. So I'm happy to announce that under the leadership of our founder and chairman, Professor Schwab, the Managing Board has decided that our next East Asia Summit, it will be a jubilee, our 25th East Asia Summit, will take place in Malaysia. <laughs> the second item is the ceremony. As you know, it's a good tradition that the current host state will hand over the originally Swiss bell cow to the incoming host state representative. So I would like to ask John and good-looking Babudi to hand over this original bell to Minister Babudi. Cool. <laughs> Usually we keep the bell until the next summit, but if you like it, you can have it until the next year. So ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you very much for your participation, but in particular for your deep engagement and friendship to the World Economic Forum. And now, even if it's a little bit sad, that's the official closing of our East Asia Summit 2015 here in Jakarta under the theme Anchoring Trust in East Asia's New Regionalism. Thank you very much, and the East Asia Summit is closed. Thank you.